Oh no, why did I buy so many speakers? What am I going to do with these? Hello, today I have something a little different, and before you click off, don't worry, there's a power adapter snuck in too. We are going to do-it-yourself build and test a Bluetooth speaker for as little money and as little time as possible. The goal is a less than one half hour build. In this video, I'm going to take you through the entire process of selecting all the components and building the whole speaker. The components might not be the least expensive, but the focus is on saving as much time as possible while building the speaker since time is money. And also, I wanted to make it easy so anyone could do this with just some basic tools. Of course, I'll also be working in some USB-C and power adapters as well. The channel does have a super button, Patreon, and I will post the data for these speakers on my webpage as well. If you want to help out, there's a donate button there also. Thanks to my current patrons. The main component is some really inexpensive wall-powered speakers I picked up recently from Newark. These are a few years old, and it looks like they may be trying to clean out the warehouse and selling these at a loss. I'm going to try a giveaway with these later on, so stick around to figure out how to get some free speakers. Continental US only for now. First time trying this. If you have any ideas for projects with the remaining speakers, leave a note down in the comments. Of course, I'll also test the power performance of the power adapter and the speakers. So here are the loudspeakers. I picked these up from Newark Electronics for about $10 per pair for a powered Bluetooth speaker. The price is really low since it looks like they're trying to get rid of these. I was surprised when a freight truck showed up to deliver them though, probably because I bought so many. The first thing we have to do is check that power adapter though. From the looks of it, it isn't great, but it does have a safety listing, so it'll do the job. The PQS ended up at 87, but that assumes you use power over its full range of power. The speakers aren't gonna do that. This is about average for a power adapter like this. It does have a high idle power consumption though, but we'll see that this really doesn't matter later on. Taking a look at the loudspeakers, we get one passive element with what looks like a pretty decent crossover. This sends low frequencies hmm, to the woofer and high frequencies shh, to the tweeter. The other speaker has the amplifier module built in for both speakers and its own crossover. I didn't do a teardown to see what they used on here since today is all about the build. These are actually quite high quality from appearances. The back of the powered speaker also has a switch to reduce the volume level, as well as a switch to change it from stereo to mono. So if you only wanted to use one of these, there's also a line input, which we can maybe make use of in some future videos. Next, I want to check the Tila small parameters on these woofers to see what might be suitable for a speaker box. These parameters can be used for lots of different speaker calculators. I don't have a particular calculator to recommend, but I usually recommend just searching the internet. The most important thing I wanted to figure out was the VAS. This is important to determine the box size. It looks to be about 0.6 cubic feet. The box volume is about one cubic foot. This is good enough. It'll end up leaving some of the low end frequency response on the table, but that's okay for the sake of compactness. The larger woofer versus other Bluetooth speakers means that it'll move some air, so I bet it won't sound too bad. Okay, let's check the idle power of these with the supplied power adapter. 1.16 watts. It's not amazing. The PQS ended up at 66 with the speakers enabled and running through various volume levels. It isn't as high as the adapter since it doesn't hit the maximum power level of the adapter or anywhere near it. Only 13 watts at full tilt. Okay, so we have the data. It is time to design something. Cheap, easy to assemble are the highlights of the build. I'm going to use an 8 inch PVC coupler for the box. This is an easy way to make a loudspeaker box. The way these speakers attach is simply tightening the mechanism so basically they just clamp down on the PVC pipe. So all we have to do is drill holes for the speakers to install. Here's some b-roll of drilling a 7 8 inch hole required for the tightening mechanism to work. One more hole is required to install the power pass through. This one is 5 eighths of an inch. There's a trick in here as well. The power adapter supplies 24 volt DC, which is close enough to 20 volt DC, so I figured this can be powered directly from a USB-C power adapter. I bought two USB-C pass-through connectors and tested them for performance. Just as an example, the performance PQS of the speaker with a power factor corrected USB-C adapter, the Anchor 736 in this case, changes to 94. Not bad. Still can't fix that idle power though. In terms of the USB-C connectors, not all are created equal. This one turned out to be quite good, very little power loss, and it works both ways. I tested the panel mount type with the USB-C only, and it works one way, and the power loss was also very high. This one was way more expensive and worse. Total fail. It looks like I'm going to be going with the cheaper and better adapter. Another reason I decided to go with USB-C is to be able to power this device from power banks on the go. Since I decided it was better to not put a battery inside the speaker, it just sounds like more hassle than it's worth. Now, the power bank and the speaker are separately replaceable and usable for other devices. It could be an option for a future to put a battery in here though. So here's a parts list for the whole project. 
The speakers, box, USB pass-through are all pretty obvious, but you'll notice a few additional items here. The 5.5mm cable connector, a little heat shrink, and a little bit of soldering to a USB-C 20-volt negotiation board means we can just plug in the speakers directly to USB-C and pull the full 20 volts when it's available. There are pre-made cables or adapters you can get to do this also if you don't want to solder. It was just a little expensive to make one yourself. $3 for the board and I had everything else versus $8 for the pre-made module. Everything's linked down below. Now we can go through some of the assembly process. I have installed one speaker and installed the USB pass-through. I added in a little fill in the box to help dampen the sound since it's a little on the small side for the box. Next, plug in the power cable we made to supply the 20 volts, then connect the loudspeaker plus and minus. I went with an in-phase configuration and we'll see the result of this later on. Basically drop in the second speaker and tighten the brackets. The holes I drilled have to be sealed. I use duct tape for now. Eventually, it will be good to seal these with silicone or caulking of some kind. I know I'm just going to use the speaker like this, so... Also, I want it to be easy to open for future experiments. Put the grill on, and you're done. Okay, let's test this thing out. Here's my test setup. It's pretty basic, but it does the job. The speakers are a little weird since the sound fires out the ends. These work great outdoors, but specifically aren't outdoor rated speakers. You can get a weird effect called comb filtering, which is going to be a concept for another day. And this is if you place them poorly in a room, and also when they're on axis. Here's a frequency response data off axis. It isn't amazing, but for $10, it's pretty good. It looks like we get about 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus or minus 10 dB, pointing at the center of the speaker. On axis, it looks a little different, but that's to be expected since the tweeter, high frequencies, shh is pointing at the microphone now. We do see a large dip in the frequency response at about 400 hertz. This is the direct relationship of the spacing of the loudspeakers in the box, being in phase, firing in opposite directions. I knew this would happen, so this is expected. When only one speaker is driven, the dip goes away. Magic. When we take a look at the total harmonic distortion, yep, that's right, it applies to speakers too. These are those extra harmonics you don't want, especially in sound. They aren't bad. 0.67% on axis and 2.7% off axis. This thing really is not bad. The maximum sound pressure level is about 96 dB at 1 meter with a sine wave at 1 kilohertz on axis. Really quite good for a relatively small speaker. This Alto Professional speaker only did 104 dB before distorting with the same source signal. This distortion was basically on par, about 1%, but the frequency response is much better for the Alto. This just gives us a little bit of a reference. Some future building ideas for this speaker was to add maybe a microphone input or a make it into a tiny portable PA speaker. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get some more power out of the system with an analog input versus the Bluetooth option. 13 watts is way off its rating. It could be a challenging and fun project build though. You could easily make two PVC pipe speakers though if you wanted a stereo pair or install only one if you wanted a more direct sound option. The challenge to YouTube is to design and build a cheaper and better and easier to make Bluetooth speaker. I'm still working on how people can send me things though. I'll update the description when I have something figured out. It could be fun to see what people come up with and if manufacturers think they can beat this cheap Bluetooth speaker build. In this case, less than $50 of raw materials and less than an hour of time to have a very functional universal USB-C powered input speaker. The ability to power the speaker with a power factor corrected power adapter or a USB power bank means it can be one of the most efficient loud speaker options from AC power to the uh, speaker output. Good luck finding that for minimum cash. The output of the speaker was very impressive for the price point. It isn't small and it isn't exactly portable, but for a good quality music box, it delivers. I've mostly listened to audiobooks while doing light yard work and it, it's clear throughout the yard without being distorted. I really can't ask for more. This power bank will be coming in a future review. I've been pretty happy with it so far. Let me know what you want for specifications on this since I don't have a system for these yet. All right, giveaway. I'm giving away two sets of these. Leave a comment down below with an answer to this question and whether or not you want free speakers. If the loudspeaker sensitivity is 88 dB at one watt and one meter, how loud will the loudspeaker be at one meter and 10 watts on the input? Try not to cheat, although the answer is pretty simple. I will pick at random from the comments two people to get speakers. Continental US only. Patrons, if interested, can get entered five times. This is going to go so poorly. Have to try something new though. You'll probably get speakers faster if you buy them on Newark. Thanks for watching. There might be some other loudspeaker adventures coming. Oh man, I did it again. At least these ones are only seven cents each from Parts Express. I can just smell a line array. If you want to see some more loudspeaker type content, let me know. Thanks again and bye.